Well, we continue our battle with F8 and um, Audit and Assurance uh, with fixed assets now, with property, plant and equipment, with non-current assets. And there's a lovely question uh, from, the pre from a previous examiner uh, from June 2006. It's a top question. It's called Quereith depending on how you pronounce it, or we're eighth, if you're going to pretend to be a scouser. Um, W-E-A-R, uh, W-R-A-I-T-H. <laughs> so that's were eighth, or uh, just to spell the first word again, uh, W-E-A-R. Um, top question, top question. And uh, yes, I guess you can extract this from the usual places. No doubt there's a copy on, the, on, on our website, but you can also get it from any of the revision kits, or indeed you can get it from the ACCA website as well. So, uh, where Wraith and uh, the subject of fixed assets. So, uh, let's have a look at the requirements um, at the bottom there. Uh, we're required to list the audit work you would perform on railway trucks, which is an outrageous 10 marks. But it's okay because the cavalry are coming over the uh, horizon uh, in the form of two classic mnemonics. We have A, E, I, O, U with proof. You notice each of those is five and five, and that gives us ten. And you can see how the examiner answered that question. Um, should be pretty easy. Even though it's very specific, it's not just list the audit work you would perform on uh, fixed assets, it's list the audit work you perform specifically on railway trucks. And it is not unreasonable, although you probably won't realise this unless you've done some audit, it's not unreasonable to do ten tests on railway trucks. If I mean, I'm not too sure what railway trucks are at the moment, but if they are as big and expensive as they sound like they are, then um, 10 tests is no big deal. If they are a material item that could affect the true and fair view of financial statements, then you'd want to be damn sure that the figure was materially correct. So 10 tests is perfectly reasonable. Um, yeah, it's cool. And then B, uh, you have just completed your analytical procedures of the non-current asset note. So presumably we're supposed to do a bit of analysis of the note ourselves. Required excluding railway trucks, which we've already done in part A. Identify and explain any issues with the non-current asset note to raise with the management. So I guess five issues and then explain how each issue could be resolved. Uh, I, 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 um, it's ages since I've done this question, but these questions, they're always, they're always the same when it comes to fixed assets. You can see straight away that land and buildings has been depreciated at 2%. It's amazing how often you see this. You see this at F8, you see this at F7. We've seen this for years and years and years. Um, land and buildings. Obviously, buildings are depreciated over their useful economic life, and 2% represents 50 years. Yeah, one over 50, 2%. Two percent. Two percent is 50 year useful economic life, which is per perfectly possible as regards uh, buildings. But land has an infinite useful economic life and therefore should not be depreciated. And therefore that's a mistake. So number one, one of the things that we would spot was, would be that land should not be depreciated. And part two, explain how it could be resolved. It's resolved by not depreciating land. So, there you go. That's the kind of thing you're looking for. It's a top question, this. I really like this one. So, I guess it's going to end up being abbreviated to WW. But here we go. Get the title down. Question. Where? Wraith. Isn't the English language a strange language? Why do you need that W? You can't hear it when you say Wraith, can you? Strange language. Okay. Uh, where a WW main activities is the extraction and supply of building materials, including sand, gravel, cement, and similar aggregates. The company's year end is the 31st of May, and your firm has audited WW for a number of years. The main asset on the financial statement, sorry, the statement of financial position, used to be known as the balance sheet. I think it's an improvement in the name. The statement of financial position is a statement of financial position. It's not just the sheet that balances. 
So I, I quite like that. The main asset on the position statement relates to non-current assets, which is perhaps not supply, surprising because they're, well, they're, they're a mining company basically, aren't they? And you'd imagine that, um, you know, the machinery is going to be expensive. They're going to have big diggers, big heavy machinery. A junior member of staff has attempted to prepare the non-current asset note for the financial statements. The note has not been reviewed by a senior accountant and so may contain errors. While I think about it, you can say, as regards our analytical procedures, one of the things you might want to raise with management is the fact that a junior member has been responsible for producing uh, a difficult, complex financial note and has not been subject to review. So, um, yeah, the recommendation would be give him some training and subject him to review. Uh, that's going to be perfectly good in part B. Um, it's come back to me now that I sometimes put that down, but sometimes I don't. There's lots of things that we can say. Um, it's going to be very tempting to go to talk about land and buildings, plant and machinery and motor vehicles all in one go. But clearly that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be focusing on railway trucks. Oh, I can see why railway trucks is worth 10 marks now. Can you see that the additions for the year is 995,000? In other words, it's, it's a million, isn't it? Which, um, looking at the size, of goodness me, it's more than the land and the buildings. So it's a huge, huge investment. It's almost the biggest thing on their balance sheet. Railway trucks. So no wonder we're going to spend 10 tests on auditing railway trucks. So you've got additions... Uh, charge for depreciation and a net book value. That's fine. Land and buildings don't care about that. Plants and machinery don't care about that. Motor vehicles don't care about that. Railway trucks relate to containers used to transport sand and gravel over long distances on the railway network. I know all about this. I used to have a flat in uh, Sanderstead, which is just south of Croydon, which is just south of London. And it's on the main... It, it, yeah, the flat's still there, I don't own it anymore. But the, the, the flat is on the main line from uh, Dover to London. So it's on the main line from where the ships arrive to London. So these, these, these huge, huge trains would go past with these huge... type of, type of trucks. And they're just... They, they, they are, they were, they were filled with aggregate. So what we're imagining, what I'm imagining, and it really helps to imagine, is there's going to be a lot of trucks. I don't know how much they're worth each, but one million pounds worth of railway trucks. So, you know, you've seen railway carriages. Railway carriages take away the carriage bit, stick a big container on it, and stick a load of aggregate, stick a load of sand, stick a load of cement, into those fellas, that's what we're talking about. So it's good to be able to picture it. Clearly it's good to be able to picture it, isn't it? You, auditing's a real thing. We audit real, real things. Um, in the exam, of course, you never audit real things, do you? Which is part of the, the difficulty of any exam, in that it's extracted from real life. It's, it's removed from real life. But if you can bring it back to real life, that really helps. And, that's what I'm doing now. I'm picturing these trucks going past my bedroom. 5.30 in the morning, I think it used to be, at the they went past. Woke me up, made me early for work. Um, depreciation rates stated in the financial statements based on the cost calculated on a straight line basis is railway trucks 20%. It's, actually, that doesn't sound right, does it? These trucks are like type of trucks. They're not going to break down in five years, are they? So there's something we can definitely audit. Five years, by the way, 20%, yeah? Five years. Disposals of... No, don't care about disposals of motor vehicles. got nothing to do with us. Right, uh, OK. Part A. A. Analytical review. Um... Analytical review is literal. It's looking at things, review, using analysis, analytical. So analytical review, looking at things using your head, tests. Um, cl classically, they're ratios, aren't they? And um, for once in my life, I've just decided to do a ratio for this. But it need not necessarily be a ratio. The ratio that jumps out at me today 
is uh, we need to take this figure of a million, I suggest, and divide it by the number of trucks, and then we'll get a rough feel for the price per truck, and then compare that to the, you know, the online prices to see if it's a reasonable figure. I would compare the following ratio to the online um, book price of what are they called now? Railway trucks. And the ratio I'm going to calculate is the additions divided, which is by the way 995,000 divided by the number of trucks. just to do what they call a reasonable test to see if the, the cost per unit is, is reasonable. I would compare the following uh, ratio to the online book price of any of railway trucks. There we go, there's our first one, analytic review. A, E, inquiry. E, inquiry. Uh, what do I feel like asking? Uh, there's all sorts of things you could ask. You know, you shouldn't start depreciating something until you start using it. So, that's kind of the simplest way of saying it. But it's, it's pretty much true. The actual thing that actually says in the FRS is slightly more complicated than that. But the basic idea is, you don't start depreciating something until you start using it. Depreciation is the cost of recognition of use. And if you only get three months worth of use, there should only be three months worth of depreciation. Now, I think that the depreciation is for a full year. It's for a full year, isn't it? Which would only be true if we bought the trucks at the beginning of the year, which is not necessarily true. So how do we find out when we bought the trucks? Well, we can ask. I would ask the plant manager When did we purchase the trucks? When did we purchase the trucks? And consider time of portion depreciation. And consider time apportioned depreciation. Okay, AEI inspection, go and inspect the trucks, I guess. I inspection. I would inspect the trucks to confirm their existence because at this stage for all we know the expenditure could have been on the managing director's house putting in a swimming pool and a new kitchen that's for all we know I would inspect the trucks to confirm their existence AEIO observation O sugar I would observe the trucks. <laughs> oh dear. Um, oh, observation. Please, when you're using these mnemonics, don't let them you know, tighten you up. If when you're working your way through, like me, you stumble with O for observation, then you just do two U's or you just do another I. It doesn't matter. The question doesn't say you have to use A, I, O, U. It's supposed to help you, not hinder you. So if you don't like an observation test, 
don't do it. Um, I would observe the trucks in use to assist in identifying any impairment. If there has been any impairment, then it'll show up um, by the truck not being in use, basically, which we would see by observation. I would observe the trucks in use to assist in identifying any impairment. A-E-I-O-U. U is a recomputation. U. Recomputation. Uh, I would recompute the depreciation charge to confirm its mathematical accuracy. I would recompute the depreciation to reconfirm its mathematical accuracy. Yeah, I don't know why I paused there, that's perfectly good. Um, A E I O U, that's five. So next one is prove the audit assertion, starting P for presentation. P presentation. P for presentation. Um, I would read the depreciation policy um, as presented in the notes and make sure it makes sense. I would read the depreciation policy as presented in the notes and make sure it makes sense. PR records are for records. Records is, you know, about the records, but the sort of recording issues you have are cut off, uh, completeness, uh, emissions, duplications, that kind of thing, you know, the accuracy of the numbers in the records. Um, It seems a bit odd doing a cut-off test as regards railway trucks, but why not? I would um, investigate any truck deliveries Uh, near the year end on either side and confirm that uh, they are recorded in the correct period. Uh, that's cut off, of course. 
I would investigate any truck deliveries near the year end on either side and confirm they are recorded in the correct period. Uh, the classic mistake, of course, is that the supplier of the trucks sends us the invoice before the year end, but actually the truck arrives just after the year end. Because the invoice has arrived, the invoice ends up in the purchase day book, and from the purchase day book it ends up in the accounting records, as if we'd actually received the truck, but we don't get the truck until the following year, so it shouldn't appear in the fixed assets and shouldn't appear in liabilities either. But of course, from our point of view, we're looking at fixed assets. It shouldn't appear in the fixed assets unless it has actually been delivered before the year end. So that's a good records test. Ownership. Do we just use the invoice? Ownership. I would verify the ownership of the trucks to the purchase invoices. I would verify the ownership of the trucks to the purchase invoices. V, valuation. Um, depreciation is an issue. Impairment is an issue. I haven't talked about uh, the life, have I? V, valuation. I would uh, verify the reasonableness of a five-year life, just make sure that they know that I know that's the 20%, a five-year life to uh, other users of similar trucks. We can't be the only people in the world with these trucks. What sort of life do people with more experience of these trucks use for the depreciation of their, their trucks. Uh, they're likely to know better than us if they're using 15 years and we're using five, then we're probably accelerating our depreciation. We're probably using a bit too much depreciation in the current year. And then the last one, existence, which is in danger of being repetitive, but I'm sure we can save ourselves from that. A, existence, Clearly, we're not going to confirm existence by inspection because that would be exactly repetitive. So, what other way can we use to confirm existence? Well, one of the classic ways of confirming the existence of things you can't inspect is by looking at the insurance records. Fraudsters are very unlikely to insure something that doesn't exist unless they're very clever fraudsters. So, there will, some of the trucks we won't be able to inspect because they'll be, you know, out in France or they'll be out in South Africa or wherever they'll be, they'll be on their way back to us, but they'll be on over the border. So, it's not possible necessarily to be able to inspect all of the rolling stock, all of the trucks. So, a good way of confirming the existence of the trucks that we don't get to see is by looking at the insurance schedule. If they are insured, then they probably do exist. I would verify the existence of the uninspected trucks to the insurance schedule. to the insurance schedule. Okay, um, that'll do me. Um, part B now, let's have a look at part B. Uh, you have just completed your analytical procedures of the non-current assets note. Required excluding the railway trucks, identify and explain any issues 
with the uh, non-current assets note to raise with management. So B1 management issue, which is, I guess, going to be very similar to kind of weaknesses, isn't it? And I presume, is it recommendations? How each of the uh, issue can be resolved. So let's use the word resolution. Ooh. Resolution. Uh, number one, the junior. Do you remember this story about the junior? Uh, just above the schedule it says, a junior member of the staff has attempted to prepare the non-current asset note for the financial statements. The note has not been reviewed by a senior accountant, so, so may contain, contain errors. Um, a junior accountant has been has uh, created the uh, PPA schedule, PPA, property, plant and equipment, PPA schedule, but has not been reviewed. Um, I recommend the junior is provided with further training. And that his work is always renew reviewed. That's okay, isn't it? Okay, uh, we need to get to the numbers, really, don't we? So, what other problems do we have? Uh, the other problem that we have is uh, one of the other problems that we have is land and buildings depreciation. So, it's just the, you know, the problem that the land has been depreciated. Um, what have we got here? Uh, it's 110,000. We've depreciated the land. As you can see, 110,000 is land and buildings. We don't know the split, but uh, the charge is 2,200 on the land and the buildings, which is obviously wrong. Land. Land has been depreciated. But land has an infinite life. and therefore should not be depreciated. Land has been depreciated, but land has an infinite life. Uh, one of the recommendations that I sometimes get in the classroom for this particular answer, which I'm rather fond of actually, uh, you can choose another way of answering this, but one of the recommendations is, I mean they're quite different, aren't they, land and buildings? They sound similar, but because one is depreciated, the other one isn't. It probably does make more sense to have a separate column for each. So that's the recommendation. I recommend a separate column for each of land and buildings and that the numbers are re reworked. Uh, I recommend a separate column 
uh, for each of the land and buildings and that the numbers are reworked. That'll do me. Um, what am I going to do for three? Oh, I have to look first, don't I? So, I don't think I have anything else on land. Plant and machinery. Well, the additions are a risk issue. The disposals are... Oh, the disposals. Ah, there's an easy one. Can you see that the accumulated depreciation on the disposals is 120,000? 120,000. And yet the cost of disposals is 100,000. So, rather unfortunately, the, the plant has been depreciated below zero net book value, which is obviously a mistake. Um, it's a bit awkward to solve that problem now, um, but uh, certainly they shouldn't make that problem again in the future. So let's have that one. Three P and M disposals. The disposals of plant and machinery have a negative uh, net book value. Brackets. 100,000 minus 120,000 equals minus 20,000. The disposals of P&M have a negative net book value. Uh, it's going to be difficult to, to solve this. It's going to be very difficult to solve this. I don't want to write too much. If what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to depreciate up to the point of disposal and, and then dispose of the assets. So if there is current year, this is getting really complicated now, perhaps going way beyond F7 and getting up to more sort of P2 and corporate reporting. But um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to depreciate from the year start to the point of disposal. If that current year depreciation is uh, more than 20,000, then just don't do it. And it's not perfect, but it'll get rid of the problem, essentially. Uh, but if it's last year's dis depreciation was over-depreciated, the only way to change last year's financial statements is through a prior period adjustment. So you would be required to do something called a prior period adjustment, which is pretty damn complicated. Um, you can definitely answer your question in that very technical way with a prior period adjustment. I think, I think that's going to be a bit too techy for my liking today as I'm recording to camera now. Perhaps on another day I might have gone for it, I don't know. But today I think I'm just going to say something like it's going to be difficult to solve this problem for the current year. However, you could, should train people to make sure it never happens again. That, that's that, that's going to work for me. It will be difficult to remove this problem in the current year Um, if the opening NBV was already negative, however, further training will prevent this happening in the future. However, further training will prevent this happening in the future. Uh, 
Um, it's going to be difficult to remove this problem in the current year if the opening MVV was already negative. However, further training will prevent this happening in the future. Um, and as I mentioned, if you're really good at your financial reporting, you might even start to talk about a prior period adjustment. But I suggest that's beyond what the examiner was actually expecting. Okay, so have we got three so far? Maybe there's something in motor vehicles that comes rushing out at us. Uh, there was a disposals of motor vehicles. And disposals of motor vehicles category relates to vehicles which were five years old. And motor vehicles have been depreciated at 33%, so it looks like there is definite over-depreciation in motor vehicles. It looks like, I mean, cars, when they're fleet cars, you know, Ford Monday was banging up and down the motorways of uh, Europe. Um, they do tend to last only three years. Uh, sales rep cars can tend to be completely knackered out after three years, so three years depreciation for cars is, is fine. But this business, I, I would imagine motor vehicles are not really what we would consider to be motor vehicles. As it says actually up there, motor vehicles include large trucks to transport the sand. I mean, they're, they're much sturdier, much stronger vehicles than we familiarly uh, associate with the phrase motor vehicles. So it's perhaps not surprising they last a little bit longer than three years. So let's have a look at that, see if we can get that as part of our answer. So four motor vehicles, depreciation. Um, the old motor vehicles lasted five years. So it is likely current vehicles will also last five years. I suggest the depreciation is adjusted to 20% and recalculated. Good. I suggest the depreciation is adjusted to 20% and recalculated. And uh, is this my last point? Was that four? I think it was, wasn't it? That's four, so this is my last point now. Uh, I guess we're going to try... Oh, we to try and find something else then. Um, land and buildings right to company offices and the land for those offices. Plant machinery ex includes extraction equipment such as diggers, dumper trucks used to extract sand and machinery and gravel. Motor vehicles include large trucks to transport land and gravel. Uh, railway trucks uh, relate to containers. We've done with railway trucks. Depreciation rates stated in the financial statements are based on the cost and calculated using the straight line basis. Uh, disposals uh, in the motor vehicles category relates to vehicles which were five years old. There are some things that are coming to me, but they're of the more difficult variety, some of the more technical ones. So I'll see if I can find something a little bit uh, less sensitive um, and a little bit more obvious, frankly. Um, What should I say? I've got a hankering for saying something about the purchases. I, I don't know if... I, there's so many things coming into my head. I don't want to say... You know, it's always difficult when you've got lots of ideas. You've got to go for one and just go for it. So, which one am I going to go for? The one that seems to be coming to me strongest at the moment is I've got a real problem with plant machinery and motor vehicles. 
They basically seem to be roughly the same thing, but there's going to be lots of different plants and lots of different motor vehicles. And I just don't like this idea, even, even though I made it in the previous suggestion. I don't really like this idea of this sort of wholesale recommendation for 20% depreciation. Maybe, maybe for the motor vehicles, 20% is okay. But it, I find it very difficult to believe that all the plant in plant is essentially exactly the same, and it's all going to last five years. Surely some of it is going to last 15 years, some of it's going to last 30 years, and some of it's going to last two years. So it's, it, this averaging, using an average depreciation rate, is not acceptable. Each of the individual assets should be depreciated over their individual lives. And, do you know, I think I'll just make that comment overall. That's what I'm going to go for. Possibly it is getting a little bit technical now and getting into the real subtleties of the IAS on depreciation. But here we go, see what you think of it. Depreciation. The depreciation of plant and machinery of PM assumes that all plant lasts five years. In practice, this is very unlikely. The individual items of plant should be depreciated over the individual lives. And if you work in fixed assets, you'll know that this is what happens in normal normal life. What you have is what's called a fixed asset register, a manager responsible for that fixed asset register, responsible for the authorization of purchases to that fixed asset register, and responsible for the maintenance, etc., for the reviewing of all these fixed assets. But the accounting also, the responsible for that, that fixed asset manager will be expected to estimate individual useful economic lives for all of the individual machines, or at the very least all the individual classes of machine, and you'd end up with lots of different useful economic lives, and just 20% would, in real life, that would never be acceptable. Well, not unless you had a very poor auditor. Or, or the possibility that plant and machinery did all happen to have five years. It seems extremely unlikely, and therefore I'm going to criticise it and make a recommendation for the uh, depreciation as actually required by the IFRS. The International Financial Reporting Standard, the IAS on depreciation, actually requires individual items of plant should be depreciated over their individual lives. And that's the recommendation I'm going to suggest to the examiner. Okay, that's were Wraith, and it covers fixed assets. I think you'll agree it's a very comprehensive question. It's an extremely good question. And funny enough, there's questions like this that keep repeating themselves um, every few years. Fixed assets is certainly not seen in every single exam, but it certainly does pop up its head every couple of years, every three years or so. And it's amazing how often it's pretty much a repetition of were Wraith. Where Wraith is a copy of a previous question called Simon's, and there are all sorts of questions going back uh, over a number of years which look incredibly similar to this question. So, a really nice question, and uh, a very good one to practice. Okay, so that's Where Wraith. <laughs>